Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be uh, solving the CSES problem set and specifically the question called missing number. So this question is pretty straightforward. So we're going to be given a set of numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth until n. But the only small catch in this is that one number is going to be missing, right? So let's just take a look at a quick example. So let's say n is equal to 8, right? So that means that we're going to get seven elements, okay? So we're going to have seven elements. And the reasoning is that one of these numbers, right? So from one to eight, one is going to be missing, right? So one of them is going to be missing. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, but there's no five. So five is the missing number. Then we have six, seven, eight. So in this case, what we would do is we would return the number five. So now it's actually what I'm going to do is take you through three approaches. And I think as you go through each approach, you can slowly come to the final approach that is probably the best way to solve this, right? So now obviously we know the missing number is five. So let's start off with a very simple approach. So in this case, you can kind of think of this as an arithmetic series. Essentially, you can think of everything having a difference of one. So let's say you know that we know the first number is one, right? So we're going to keep track of what it's actually supposed to be. Okay, so let's just call this actual number, right? So now we're the first number we're supposed to get, right? Assuming there are no missing numbers is the number one, right? The next number we are supposed to get is the number two. And we get this by just adding the previous number, right? So after two, we're going to get two plus one, three. After three, we expect three plus one, four, and so on and so forth. So let's see how this algorithm looks like. So we get the actual number, which we initialize as one, and we also take in an input. Mm -hmm. So the input is what we get, right, of the, all the uh, n minus one numbers that we actually get. So now the first number we get is the number one. So in this case, one is equal to the actual number. So obviously that's not the missing number. So now we go to the next number that we expect, which is the number two, and the input is also two in this case. So they're again, same. So now the next number we expect is three and we also get three, so that's amazing. And then we expect the number four and we get four again. And now we expect the number five, but the number we get is six, right? Now obviously six is not equal to five. So in this case, what that means is that we have expected the number five, but we did not actually end up getting that. And in simple words, that means that five is the missing number. So five is what we're going to return and that's going to be it. So now let's look at the worst case, oh, sorry, the time complexity of this, uh, sorry. So in this case, uh, in terms of space, it's gonna take big O of one or constant space. We're not using any extra memory for this, right? And now other than that, we're going to actually, uh, for time complexity, we could have a worst case of big O of n because let's imagine a condition where the missing number is the last number, right? So in this case, you'd have to go through all of these numbers. So big O of n is the time complexity and big O of one is the space complexity. So this over here is our first uh, approach. Now let's move on to our second approach. So this kind of follows the idea that I just explained, which is you can kind of think of this as an arithmetic series, right? So let's say n is equal to eight. Let's kind of look at what we expect. So this is what we expect, assuming there are no missing numbers. So let me just write that down. So assuming there are no missing numbers and given n is equal to eight, so we would have one, the next number would be plus one. So two plus one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is assuming we don't have anything missing, but that's obviously not the case over here. So what we can do is we can use a bit of math. So this over here is what we call an arithmetic series, since the difference between any two consecutive values is the same. In this case, it's one. So what you can do is there is a formula for finding the sum of the arithmetic series. So essentially, the formula is like this. So this is one form of it. So you can do n by two uh, times the first number plus the last number, okay? So in this case, we know the first number is supposed to be one, right? So, and we know the last number, since we know the n value, it is supposed to be eight. So we get one plus eight over here. And now we know n is uh, the number of elements we have. So in this case, what are the number of elements? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight elements divided by two, right? So the expected sum of the series is going to be eight by two, which is four, and eight plus one is nine. So nine into four is nothing else but 36. 
So we are supposed to get a sum of 36 when there are no missing numbers. But we do have a missing number. So the way we get this missing number is very simple. We actually just find the sum of all the inputs we have. So the sum of this over here is going to be, so 1 plus 2, 3, 6, 10, 16, uh, and then you'd get 24, uh, 31, right? So this the sum over here would be 31, okay? But the sum we're expecting is 36. So what is the difference between these two? So 36 minus 31, and obviously the difference is 5. And that means that the missing number that we have is the number 5. So this is what we're going to end up returning. So this over here is actually going to take us a time of big O, oh, sorry, uh, it's going to take us a time complexity of big O of n because we have to iterate through all of these n numbers and uh, you could do it with additional space by uh, storing all of them inside of a vector or instead you could just keep track of a, a running sum, right? So that would be the easier approach which doesn't take any extra space. So these are the two approaches that we came up with so far. So one of them is kind of using a math formula and one of them is in its own way brute force, right? So now let's go through our final approach, which is actually going to take log and time. So I think my best way to explain this to you is by actually drawing a very simple graph uh, with respect to this, okay? So this graph is not drawn perfectly to scale, but it's just to show you a basic idea. So on the x-axis, we have the index. So uh, it's going to go from zero all the way to n minus two. So we would have all the way up to six, right? Six would be the last index. And if you want to check, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty straightforward, right? Cool. And uh, real quickly, it's six because minus one, because one is one number is missing, and another minus one because indexing starts at zero and not one. Cool. And now on the y-axis, we have our value. So now let's actually look at a case where we don't have anything missing. So just like the previous case, we had all the numbers from one to eight without any uh, missing values. So at the uh, 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 index zero, we have the number one, right? Actually, let's just you know, to make it simple. Let's say this is one. So we have the number one. Then at the index one, we have the value two. Then we have the value three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, and then eight. Now, my basic point that I'm trying to prove here is that you would get a perfectly straight line when there are no missing numbers, right? Given this graph over here. But that is not the case. So let's see what this is going to look like. So first we have one and then two, and then we have three and then four. So, so far it's perfect, but now we don't have five, right? So let's say this was five, we'd actually skip it and go one above. So now we go to six and now seven and eight. So the way you can kind of think of this is that this part is straight, right? It has its own order, six, seven, eight, and this part as well, right? So this is one, two, three, and four. Now the missing part is kind of like a jump. Well, I mean, I, I didn't draw it perfectly, but there is a slight jump in this part over here. So we can actually use this to our advantage. And uh, if this graph doesn't actually help you visualize that, a simpler way to think about it is the number five is supposed to be at what index, right? So in simple words, at the index zero, we expect the value to be the index plus one, right? So at the zeroth index, we expect the value to be one. At the index one, we expect the value to be two. So we can actually use that same logic. So I'm just gonna write down the index values over here real quickly, right? So zero all the way to six. And over here, uh, very straightforward, you could just, uh, you could iterate through this. And at the index four, we expect the value five, but we didn't find it, right? So now what we can actually do is we can actually turn this into a binary search uh, problem, right? So this is something that we could do. So we could store these values and make it a binary search problem. So the way that, or the conditions we actually set up might be kind of confusing, but let's just go through it, right? So obviously we know the missing number is at the fourth index because, well, this value is supposed to be five. And we know that because the value is supposed to be the index plus one, which is five. So what we're gonna do is each time we know if something is missing, okay? So, uh, so let's say we are at a certain index, right? So let's just say we go to an index, so array uh, in, in that we go to our index, and how do we know if something is missing? So if this value is not equal to the index plus one, then that means that the something is wrong there. But this is actually not perfect, right? So real quickly, let's say we go to the fifth index, we expect the value six to be there, but it's not there. 
So now the basic thing that I want to show you here is that after one number is increased, everything after that is also in the wrong index, right? So now at the fifth index, we expect the value six, but we have the value seven. Likewise, in the sixth index, we expect the value seven, but we have the value eight. So this actually shows the jump of values. Everything is increased by one, okay? And we can actually use this property to our advantage. So just this condition doesn't mean we have a missing number. Now, the other condition we had to check for is this is the missing number that we kind of have over here. We had to check if the number previous to it is in the correct spot, right? So now at the fourth index, it's the wrong spot, but the third index has it in the correct spot, right? So the way we check that is we go to array, we go to our index, whatever that is, and we want to go one behind. So index minus one, and we check if that is equal to the value it's supposed to be. The value this is supposed to be is going to be the index itself. Now the logic is simple. At index, we expect, okay, so actually let me just write it down. So at index, we expect the value to be index plus one. So obviously when we go one back, so at index minus one, we expect the value to be index plus one minus one. So the ones just negate each other, just giving us index. So that's the logic here. So if both of these conditions are true, that means that the current index we are on has a missing number. And in that case, the value that we're actually going to return is that number itself, which is the index plus one. So if this condition is true, we're going to return our index plus one, right? So in this case, real quickly, we know that the number that is missing is right in between of these two, right? So right over here, the number five. So the way we get that is the current value we're on is wrong, but the previous value is correct, which kind of represents this jump of continuity that we have here. So that means the missing value is the index plus one. Cool, so we got this part, and now real quickly, we actually need to see how we move our left and right, right pointers accordingly, right? So this is uh, very similar to this entire thing. So essentially, uh, we, have, we go to a mid-index, right? And we perform this check first, and if it is not a missing number, what we do is we check. So we go to our index, right? So uh, real quickly, array index, and we check if it is a correct value. So if array index is equal to the index itself plus one, then that means that it is in a correct spot. So let's say, for example, we are over here at this index. That means we're at a correct spot, right? Two plus one is equal to three. So in that case, that means that the value is not missing to the left of it, right? So again, looking at this graph, once a value is missing, all the values to the right of it are skewed by one. So this means that nothing to the left is missing. So what we do is this is the condition here, we move our left to mid plus one. That means that at this index, everything to the left is in the correct spot, okay? Now using the same logic, for our right index, right, if this is not the case, right, so if something is misplaced, but the previous value is not, so if something is misplaced, which means only this part of this condition is true, then that means, and the below part is not true, then that means that, let's say we're uh, at this number, for example, right, so at the index five, where we're supposed to have six, but the number before it is also wrong. So in this case, we move our search space to the left. And we do that by making our right value to be equal to mid minus one, because we want to search for values on the left, because we know the missing number is going to be to the left of that certain index. So this is going to be our basic search conditions. And hopefully this does make sense. And I think this graph does help in some way. And yeah, let's see what this looks like in code now. Okay, so before that, real quickly, this is the code for the first approach. Pretty straightforward. We find the sum and then we add all of them and then we subtract it, and that's what we return. Cool, so now let's look at this binary search approach that we have. Okay, so over here, uh, we this is uh, handling the input, and we're storing everything in an array. So obviously that is going to take big O of n extra space. Cool, uh, so now we have our basic condition. So while L is less than or equal to R, R is going to be set as the last index. So now we find mid, which is L plus R by two. Now we do this condition over here. So this is the exact same condition that I mentioned over here, sorry. So this is the exact same condition. So if this condition over here is true, that means that that index is where the value is missing. So then we return mid plus one, 
and we break out of this while loop because we are done. We found what we're looking for. But if that is not the case, we have two conditions. So if the current value we're on has the correct value, right? So if the value is index plus one, that means that everything to the left of it is correct. So we move our search space to the right and we move, do that by doing L is equal to mid plus one. But if this is not the case, that means that the current value is wrong and also that the previous value is also wrong. So that means we move our search space to the left. So now R is equal to mid minus one. So that's going to be the entire solution. And obviously the uh, space complexity, like I said, is big O of N and the time complexity is gonna be big O of log N. So that should be it guys. And thanks a lot for watching and do let me know if this video helped you. Thank you.